Thank you, Dr. Rosenblum. That was a challenging reminder of why we need to persevere. And folks, let's show our love and our peaceful demonstration here today. Um, we're glad that their moms decided not to abort them and that they're here today. So let's show them that love. Let's let them do their thing. It's my honor now to introduce Archbishop John Vlasny. Archbishop Van Vlasny recently celebrated an anniversary of sorts, 25 years as a bishop. And it was surprising to me, because it seems like the time has gone very quickly, that he has been here in our Archdiocese of Portland for 11 years. It's an honor to have you here this morning. And this, I keep on saying this morning, it's cold. It should be morning, right? This afternoon, thank you, Archbishop. First of all, I very much want to thank Gail Atterbury and the folks at Oregon Right to Life for bringing us here together at Pioneer Square for this rally. I think it's kind of obvious that just our being here has already made a statement that's being heard and being reacted to. We know that it was 36 years ago this coming Thursday, January 22nd, 1973, when I was still teaching high school, that the Supreme Court of this land, in its Roe v. Wade decision, legitimized abortion on demand in this, our own native land. And as we know since then, 50 million babies have been lost to abortion. Unfortunately, the Roe v. Wade decision created an abortion mentality in the minds and the hearts of too many of our fellow citizens, and frankly, one that changed moral persuasion about a very serious evil. As many of you know, I am the pastor of the Catholic people here in Western Oregon. And we Catholics are pro-life because our Christian tradition is pro-life. Our mission to defend human life applies over the entire course of life, from conception to natural death. And because our voice is a prophetic one, we continue to speak out to protest the injustices and indignities like abortion against the human person. We're not trying to win a popularity contest or an election. We're simply trying to do what's right, what's just. But let's remember, let's remember that when we talk about abortion, we're not discussing simply a religious matter. This is an ethical concern. Stealing, lying, and doing physical harm to others are also wrong, not simply because they're violations of anybody's faith or religion, but because they contradict human reason. The fact that human life begins at conception is a scientific conclusion, not a religious one. The moral norm which prompts our constant opposition to abortion is the fact that each and every human life has inherent dignity and thus must be treated with the respect due to a human person. And so the claim that some human lives don't deserve respect or shouldn't be treated as persons is to deny the very idea of inherent rights. Now, we all know that pro-abortion groups took considerable comfort in the results of our recent elections. And they've already sent a comprehensive 55-page booklet of their agenda to the incoming administration in Washington, D.C. But this agenda, which includes publicly funded abortions, passage of the so-called Freedom of Choice Act, plus attacking the Hyde Amendment and other long-standing pro-life provisions in appropriate bills simply won't sell in the general public. Some of these politicians talk about working to reduce abortions, but let's face it, we all know that you can't reduce abortions by promoting abortion and eliminating all the policies that have proven effective in reducing abortions. My friends, as discouraging as some of these initiatives may seem to us, let's not forget the successes, the successes we have already achieved because of folks like yourselves, because of Oregon Right to Life, 
in changing many hearts and many minds over this land. A nationwide survey, which was commissioned by the Catholic bishops in our country last month, found that fewer than one in 10 Americans support legal abortion for any reason at any time during pregnancy. And yet, you know what? That's precisely the current state of abortion law resulting from the United States Supreme Court 1973 decisions, which made abortion legal throughout all nine months of pregnancy. In other words, pro-abortion groups are basically out of touch with mainstream America. Now, because abortion advocates think that this is their moment, their moment for expanding the so-called right to abortion, it's more important than ever that you and I let our minds be known to all our legislators concerning our opposition to measures like that Freedom of Choice Act. That act, that act, my friends, poses a very serious threat to human life. It would eliminate regulations that protect women from unsafe abortion clinics. It would force taxpayers like you and me to fund abortions. It would require all states to allow so-called partial birth and other late-term abortions. It would subject women to abortions by non-physicians, violate the conscience rights of nurses, doctors, and hospitals, and strip parents of their right to be involved in their minor daughter's abortion decision. My friends, the loss of 50 million babies over these past 36 years is tragedy enough. But if passed into law, the Freedom of Choice Act would surely raise the current level of 1.2 million abortions a year, higher than ever. Many social issues are important nowadays, lots of them. They will require our attention. But some issues have more weight than others. Deliberately killing human life, or simply standing by and letting it happen, dwarfs all other social issues. My friends, as this 36th anniversary of Roe v. Wade approaches, we find that our voice, our voice is needed now more than ever. We must publicly express our rejection of that abortion extremism of legislation like FOCA. We must work tirelessly to overturn an evil and unjust law which effectively denies the humanity of unborn children and, sad to say, allows them to be torn from limb to limb. God bless us all. God bless America.